Hey guys, Corbin here. In the last video I talked about setting up Mach 4 with my custom screen set for doing an automatic tool changer or an ATC on Avid CNC. And in this video it's a continuation where I'm going to talk about how I set up the tool heights using my custom screen set. Let's get into it. Tool heights. So tool heights are really important for an automatic tool changer because they may vary from one tool to another. So let's talk about how to set them up with an ATC. All tool heights are going to be based off a master tool. And for me, I'm using a Heimer 3D sensor as my master tool. It has height zero, and everything else has a height based off of that, or a length based off of that. You could use one particular bit that you put into your holder, or you could use a steel dowel in a holder, which a lot of people tend to do. Once it's set, it's good to be able to find that again but you don't necessarily have to. I'll discuss that a little bit more in a bit. So the first thing to do is we have to set up the master tool. I'm gonna to use my Heimer. We have to tell the machine that we're gonna be putting the master tool into it. So my current tool is gonna to be tool zero, which is my master tool. So I wanna have zero here, hit enter. It's gonna have a height of zero. So my master tool is gonna to be my Heimer 3D sensor. For you, it could be something else. You could be a steel dowel. It could be really any tool that you want. It's good that's consistent. So I like this sensor. So, so I put it in the spindle. And as I talked before about the UI, I set tool zero as the active tool. So now I can go ahead and touch off on either my spoil board or a very known surface, such as this granite plate. So I'm going to do that right now. I'm jogging the machine about to the middle of my plate. Jogging it down. These sensors are great. They work on all three axes. Turn my step size to something small. Now I'm going to go even smaller. So for my Heimer sensor, I had to go into a zero. Now I'm going to zero my Z. If you're using a touch plate, it'll automatically zero the Z for you. And this is now the reference. Okay, now my Z zero is right here on this plate. Take my reference tool out and put in the tool I want to measure the height for. Now I'm going to go to the machine and tell the software that tool 23 is now in the spindle. Whenever you're setting a tool height, you have to tell the machine what tool it has. So I'm going to set a tool height for, let's say this is tool 23. So I hit 23 and hit enter. Now notice we don't have any green areas. This tool is going to be in the spindle. I'm going to manually put it in the spindle, but it doesn't have a pocket assigned to it, and that's OK. OK, so there's a lot of ways to find the particular position when this bit is right at this surface or some particular gauge block height above it. I like to use one of these, which I'll link to in the description. It's exactly four inches tall, and we're going to set the tool off based on that height. Uh, you could use a piece of paper, using that as your gauge block thickness until it's barely touching the paper. But I find this thing is a lot more accurate and consistent. So I'm going to drop it in. Let's zoom in. Okay, so right now it is spot on at zero. Right at zero. Now in the UI, I have make sure that that tool is actually assigned to the current tool what's in the spindle. Tool 23 in my particular case, hit enter. The height doesn't matter, it's actually going to change because this is a new bit. And we're going to use this tool offset because we're setting the tool offset. My gauge block is exactly four inches. And so if I hit the set tool button, it's going to set the height based on that zeroing off of the plate and the four inch gauge block. So I'm going to do that. And the height changed, which is what I was expecting. If I go to the tool table, tool 23 will now have an updated height. And it's also showing the same value here and also down here in the lower area. If you use a piece of paper, you can measure that thickness of the paper or a shim and put the height here of that shim and hit set tool and that will do the same thing. Once we have one tool height set, 
we repeat the process with other tools, insert them, set the heights, and do it for all the tools that we have in holders. Anytime the tool height changes, like you break a bit and replace it, you gotta update it. One thing to note about the tool heights is if you have a non-zero tool height and you're using the Avid touch plate, the touch plate by default will actually have issues. It will not work properly to set the Z height of material. I fixed that, so if you are using my screen set, it will work with the touch plate to touch off the top of your material. If you aren't, don't use it. It's gonna just do something bad. It's gonna either dive down into it, which has happened to me, or uh, go up and not do the right values. It would be super nice if we could automatically set tool heights with the touch plate, and it would be possible to do, but I might have to write some code to do it and to basically track it and do it myself, and I just haven't had time to do it yet. That's what that touch off button would do. Just isn't implemented. If someone else wants to do it, that'd be awesome. So that's the basics for setting tool heights. There are a lot of ways to do this, and this is just my general process. In the next video, I'm gonna talk about the last bit for setting up the automatic tool changer, which is modifying the post processors for Fusion and uh, Vectric VCarve in order to actually generate the tool change command. Thanks everyone, bye.